Hey, hey, how's it going? I'm doing good. Pretty worn. I would for sure get them pulled. Because his tires are like leaning in. That's what we noticed. And then so his dad was like, hey, you might want to get the ball joints like that because you know the tires look leaning in. And then all of a sudden, a couple days later, that's whenever like the whole thing just popped. Yeah. Yeah, it's positioned properly. Yeah, you just got a bad ball joint. I met it. But I can also, you see that CV axle? Uh huh. Yeah, it's all ripped and it's, it looks all dry in there. So he was talking about some boots. Like that have the oil and stuff in it. Yeah, that's what those are. One. Yeah. Do you recommend to go ahead and buy the boots as well, or does it come with the whole arm? Well, if you get the CV axle, it'll all come one unit. So you'll have both of those boots, and it'll be intact. That all you have to take the knuckle off and stuff, and then yeah, it's all one part. That's wild. Yeah, that's crazy. I've seen it though. At least he wasn't driving. Oh yeah, no, he literally, they had material in the back of the truck and he went to reverse and after that he like stopped because he felt it kind of drop. Yeah. So you said the CV joints, the upper CV joints? Um, well, so those CV axles are just, you'll just have one. Or I mean, you'll just have, they're only in one position. You'll have two, I mean, but they'll only have one position, so. Okay. Um, those, those weren't broken, but I would for sure get them replaced because they're, yeah. if they're that dry, you know what I mean? They're going to be... Um, so how much would you say on labor? So for, um, well... He's going to buy parts tomorrow. Let me see here. So if you're wanting... I'll do both upper control arms for like 200 okay. But if you're wanting the CV axles too, then that'll be like 350 total. The CV are they different? The CV axles? They're, yeah. So your this is your your axle goes through here. It's what you know. It's basically what spins the wheel when it goes all through the other side. So I mean, they're still intact. They're not broken. If you wanted to wait on those and just do the upper control arms, I was only pointing that out because eventually they'll break. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll just dry out and break. So, okay. but yeah, if I were you, I'd just do the upper control arms with the ball joint. Um, like I said, it was just like 220 for labor and for both of those. Okay. So, yeah. Well, I'll definitely uh, hit you up tomorrow and we can arrange like a time for next week. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah for sure. Well, all right. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, no problem. Thank you so, much. so I can kind of, yesterday I got freaking tied up. Oh, it's okay. It was my birthday yesterday. So oh, really? I think that's what Bailey said. Yeah. I think yeah. she's like, yeah, because I. I didn't have, I have a new number and I didn't have you saved in there. And then I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure this is Anna. Because there was only like, I last like six messages that were on there. So, and then, yeah. But I, you're very welcome. I'll talk to you tomorrow. First person that can tell me what customer this vehicle is from, or I mean, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. And the first person that can tell me what vehicle this customer belongs to and what vehicle I worked on for her in the past, I've already posted that video. Um, it, it was a while ago, I'm not gonna lie, but that'll kind of reach out and see who's a great follower of mine. But anyways, the first person that can tell me what vehicle she owns that I worked on um, and what I did to it, I will literally send you a free t-shirt. I'm not even joking. And now that being said, um, I got a freaking terrible view of what that, what happened to that ball joint. And no, don't worry because I'll be out there in like a couple days to replace it. I think actually tomorrow, um, but you'll probably won't see that video for like three or four days. But anyways, um, don't worry, you'll see it up close and personal. We'll get right into the thick of the action. But typically guys, my videos are a bit longer than this. So since we had a little bit of time left on the back scale of the video, I wanted to bring up this comment right here. Now, the craziest thing that I've ever had to, that I've ever like experienced really, like I guess it wasn't really the customer's fault, but I went out and I did a power steering pump for a vehicle. 
Um, and it was like a high pressure hose or something like that, high pressure line. I should have honestly done my own diagnosis to it, period, flat out, um, point blank. But because she had already went to a shop, I'm not gonna name the shop, but she went to a shop and she got a printout of what was wrong with it. High pressure line, she bought the line. So I just installed it. It was pretty freaking difficult to do. But I installed it and that wasn't even what was leaking, guys. It was the pulley that was leaking. But anyways, there was no diagnosis done to this vehicle whatsoever by me. And so I replaced the line and she still had a power steering uh, pump leak. And this time it was actually coming from the pulley. And like I said, I didn't diagnose, di diagnose it or anything like that. I just went there to change the... Uh, to me, she was like all cool and was like, you know, I understand. I'm sorry. And I was like, you know, I'll drop down the price for you some, but I can't do it for free. You know what I mean? Like that. This ain't like no warranty work or anything like that. If you had me diagnose it and I replaced the wrong thing, then sure the next day when I had come back to do the job there was an, an elderly gentleman I wouldn't really say he's elderly he's like 50 something this guy had been drinking okay and he was actually her neighbor and they lived in like a duplex deal and I was underneath the vehicle and this guy came out and he like kind of nudged my foot kind of like in an aggressive way you know what I mean so anyways I, I don't really like that stuff I'm just gonna say so anyways I kind of rolled out of there kind of quick and I was like dude what the hell and uh, I could tell he was like drunk and you know, he was just like, he straight up flat out was like, so you you put the line on and it was still leaking just as bad, huh? And I was like, yeah, you know, it wasn't the line. And he was like, man, I could have done a better job than that. And so instantly, you know, zero to 10 got pissed. And I was like, Yo, by all means, dude, go underneath there and then knock yourself out, you know? Which obviously it was not even, I shouldn't have done. This is freaking, not even his car. You know what I mean? It was, my, it was his neighbor's car. It was my customer's car. Anyways, in anger, I was like, you know what? Go underneath there, you know, knock yourself out. And then he like tried to like start sizing me up. And uh, you know, that's when I was like, you know, this is my business. I'm not trying to, I'm not gonna show up in somebody's lawn and start trying to start fights. Now, if you like, here's the deal, dude. If like anything was like approached to me, never would I ever back down, not in a million years. Even if there's multiple people, but I'm not looking for trouble, if you know if that makes any sense. So I was like, you know, here's the deal, man. You know, clearly you're drunk. You just need to back the fuck off and let me finish my job and I was like you know if you really cared about your customer or you really cared about your neighbor you'd go inside and let me finish my work and then he did he did he went inside for like two seconds then he come back out with this tiny little this little tiny baby knife okay and then that's when I was like you know what I'm just gonna pack up and get the fuck out of here because I can't be underneath the vehicle working with some drunk dude just sitting there holding a little freaking shank knife I mean it was a bit ridiculous and so what I did is I just put everything back together and I told the lady, I said, hey, we're gonna have to take this to my location because I'm not gonna do it at your location, absolutely not. Um, I was like, but I put everything back together for you. Um, and I really didn't even get that far, guys. I was only working for like 20, 30 minutes when he showed up. So I basically just had to put a hose back on or something. But anyways, I was like, hey, bring it out to my location. And then she just lost it. She was like, you know, I paid you money to come out and this and that. And I was like, man, that's when I kind of got discouraged about being a mobile mechanic, period. Because I was like, man, I'm going to deal with people like this. But then I just learned to avoid people like that. You know what I mean? So I know how to say no to some people and no to some customers. I've learned that along the way. But back to this customer, you know, she obviously, she was getting all upset and was like, I paid you money and this and that. And it wasn't even crap, dude. I charged her like $100 for that job and it wasn't, it for sure was worth more. And so, you know, I was like, you know, I was like, we went down the freaking memory lane of like, hey, you didn't I didn't diagnose it or nothing. You gave me the part and told me to replace it. And it was that easy. It was that simple. Not that easy, but it was that simple. But all the meanwhile, she had no idea that her drunk neighbor came out with a little tiny pocket knife. And I mean, it literally was little dude. The thing was like this freaking big. And so, I mean, I wasn't scared. I mean, honestly, guys, I wasn't scared about it. But I like I'm underneath a vehicle that's jacked up and the wheel off. Things can go sour real quick. A tiny little knife, I'm not really, I can kind of defend myself, especially against a drunk dude. I wasn't really, it was just kind of the headache of it, you know what I mean? And then once you get mad, as, a, as a, every mechanic knows you, you take a mechanic there and to the point where like you're dissing his work and stuff like that, disvaluing him, discrediting what he does, freaking shit turns sour real, real easily, you know what I mean? Anyways, the, all the meanwhile, she had no idea that her neighbor had done that. And so I, you know, I enlightened her on the situation and then she was extremely apologetic. And then um, at that point, I was just like, you know, I mean, I really, I don't want to do this to anybody ever, period, but I don't want to 
continue work with you i was like so i put you know i put your your everything back up so it's at the point of where it was in the beginning so you're just gonna have to take it somewhere else or have somebody else um do it and then she actually messaged me like a month after that and said she took it to the place that she had diagnosed and because they got the diagnosis wrong um they went ahead and discounted the uh pump for putting it in there and now she's you know all jipper and happy and